Good day, it's Robbie again. A little while back you would have seen where I cast up some of these blanks uh, with molten aluminium melted down Toyota car wheel rim. And these blanks are actually to make filler plugs for a filler plug for my old 860 Ducati 1970s era bevel drive engine. Uh, the filler plug on it was the wrong sort. So uh, they turned out quite well and then I moved on to cut a thread on them, single point, single pointing the, uh, the thread into it, plunging in and it didn't actually cut very well, in fact it cut awful, um, it tore this stuff up too much. So I then went to, well, that was plunge cutting, so I then went to angled top slide and I only just started and the, ch and the tumbler gears on the lathe crapped out, they were buggered. So I had to then switch to making up some new tumbler gears which worked out great and that was in my last video. So now I'm back on this project. So where are we at? Well, I've cut threads on two of them and they turned out pretty good. But I cheated. I didn't, uh, I didn't go on with a single point threading. I just couldn't be bothered. For 10 bucks I could get a, a nice die from China which I did, so that way you're going to do a, a proper formed thread and uh, being aluminium, you know, you don't want it tearing up. Uh, it's got to be a good fit, so that's a 22 by 1.5. No problem. And, uh, of course, I then had to make a die holder for it, which I knocked up out of some scrap new, or some old new stock all rusty I got from the scrapyard. And that turned out pretty good too, so there's the die holder to do the job. I put a bit of recess in the back so that gives you a bit extra space to feed through, even though I only really need the length, the depth of the thread, but who knows, down the track I might want to cut something a bit deeper. Anyway, I'm diverging. But it is interesting looking at this scrap still to show you how you never know exactly what you're getting. Now this was supposed to be mild steel, but if you look at that, that's not a mild steel. That's actually steel. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is steel for making truck axles, or tra truck trailer axles. You can see the composition is a lot harder on the outside, far harder than the centre. And uh, it was okay. It machined okay. I could tap a thread in it okay. I'm not complaining, but I'm just saying when you buy steel from junkyards, and it's all rusted, you don't know what you're getting, you know. The guy might say one thing and it could be another. So, I mean, I've got about six lengths of big round stock out there, probably a quarter of a tonne, and every bit I've, every bit I've cut and machined has been different. Some are soft, some are hard as hell. And this one, in this case, as you can see, I'm pretty sure is um, axle steel. They do it that way so that uh, the axles will flex a bit, and not, not break, so they have a, a double composition. Okay, so where are we at now? Well, of course, when I did this job, you have to grip the aluminium without marking it. So I did that by uh, putting some aluminium strip around it, like this, just cut some strip put it around the jaws, put it around the, uh, the, the faces and that then goes into the three jaw chuck and it gripped it okay. And it did the job. It avoided marking it. This one here actually has been marked because the, <laughs> the aluminium got used a bit too many times and it, and it broke. But anyway, if you use new aluminium that will protect the, the metal. But now, that's not a problem, but there is a problem and I'll show you the problem. Now I've long been a proponent of uh, using collets to grip stuff because collets will not damage threads. Uh, collets are great, they've got lots of advantages, but particularly if my finger was threaded, if that was a thread, and I wanted to grip it without marking it, damaging the thread, no matter whether it's steel or aluminium, but particularly softer metals, a collet will grip it all the way around, won't damage the thread, at all, no matter how, how hard you tighten it up. Whereas uh, the jaws of a chuck will crush into the 
the sides of the thread and deform it. So, what's the problem? Well, the problem is, this is the ER32 set, which is the most common, but it only goes to 20 mil. This is 22, so obviously I can't use a collet, well, not my collets, to grip, uh, to grip the job, because I have to grip it on this end to machine that, I want to machine the, the length of the nut section back to half that length. So, how do you grip it if you haven't got a set of collets, or if your collets aren't big enough? Now, ER40 collet would grip this, they go higher than, than 20 mil, but I haven't got ER40, and most people don't use ER40 because they're bulkier, more expensive, da 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 da. ER32 is the most common set. Okay, what are we going to do? Well, I'll show you. Well, for a start, we're not going to grip it with a three jaw chuck. We're not going to group it with collets, obviously. We're going to use a four jaw chuck for a start. The reason being that as you can't use collets, you're going to go for your maximum surface area grip, which will be four jaw. And we can't, well, I wouldn't want to just grip it in like this. We have to put some protection, we have to protect that thread somehow, so I'll show you the simple way to do it. While we can protect flat surfaces in the chuck jaws pretty easily by using some metal as a cushion, you can use aluminium, copper, brass, even light gauge steel, just enough to stop it marking the job. You know, there's a mark on that one for a start where it went through the aluminium. The aluminium was too thin. Uh, so I went to the thicker stuff. I mean, you, people can use Coke can or all sorts, but you need a cushion. And flat surfaces, the jaws spread the pressure over quite a big area. Not a problem, generally, even with a three-jaw chuck. But when you come to round, it, round surfaces, you're going to get that, the jaws pulling in on the crown, you know, the circumference of the, of the thread. So you can't just use light gauge stuff like this. What you have to do is you have to go to your scrap bin and keep all the old scrap and you get a bit of tubing. I mean a lot of people know this trick, it's pretty simple. But you get a piece of tubing, which is the same diameter, and we're going to use that as a cushion. We're going to cut a section off, we're going to slit it so it will it can crush in, and then we'll basically use that to cushion the, the thread and protect the thread while we machine the, the end of the job off in this case. I want to take half that end off. So that's all there is to it. It's quite simple. So we'll do it and we'll try it and we'll just see how it works.
need some more out, so I'm going to have to cut a bit more. Well, it's good using friction discs because they don't put any load on the job. So we'll cut a bit more out of it. <laughs> Clean it up again. Once again, these little pencil die grinders are fantastic for this sort of work. Alright, so we should be good to go. Try it on. And you can see that grips up. We'll make sure the jaws don't go on this point here. So there you go, we're all ready now to put that in the four jaw chuck. And we should be able to grip that without doing any damage. Provided we don't go too tight, you know, I mean, do it up, but don't go berserk, and uh, that should be quite all right. All right, moving along. Right, you can see here that the The cushion has uh, got the split between two jaws and now we're ready to do our machining so yeah we'll get on with it. Right, that's it. Right, there's our thread. Perfectly undamaged. That's all it took. That little protector. So that's how you do it, guys. Yeah. Okay. Take that out. We're moving along. Well, there you go, the thread protector did its job. And uh, I mean, this was the first one I machined up. There's a couple of marks on it that I, I'll probably do another one up, but it just shows you how the exercise works. And uh, yeah, I machined a bit more back on it, so that one should now fit in the crankcase quite nicely. So yeah, we'll put it in and, and see how it looks. Right, well. Here's the hole where the filler plug goes. Here's the, the prototype filler plug, which is very close to the, what the factory ones look like. So we'll put it in and we'll see how it looks. And there it is. Pretty nifty, eh? Not bad for backyard casting. Anyway, the purpose of the video was to show you how to protect threads, and that's what the video did. So, uh, yes, it's not difficult, to uh, look after the threads if you haven't got a collet set, but just, you know, make up an adapter and away you go. Anyway, that's it for me. Uh, I'll go and machine the rest of the plugs up now and who knows what I'll do with them, but at least I'll have uh, plenty of spares. <laughs> okay, until next time, that's it for now. Cheers. See ya.